Good morning, everybody. Good morning to our Innovate Supply Chain event. It's uh, great to see so many people turning up at a live event again after two uh, years of COVID. My name is Sir Martin Lovers. I'm a Chief Trend Watcher of Supply Chain Media. I will uh, guide you through the day. Um, and it's good to see you here because we all know it's kind of turbulent time. And uh, the, the theme of today is which uh, mountain to climb. So we all know there's a kind of shit storm over there in the, out there in the supply chain, the global supply chain. It started out two years ago with the shortages of um, uh, uh, container vessels, containers, unloading uh, of containers in the harbors, uh, truck drivers, uh, uh, people in the warehouses. There was a huge shortage, and later on there was a huge shortage of uh, material, um, uh, raw materials, parts, and you name it. And um, we thought things would improve. But uh, unfortunately, now 500 ships are waiting in the port of uh, Shanghai to be loaded and unloaded. So in the next weeks, there will be uh, a huge bullwhip of uh, unloading of ships all around the world. So we are not there yet. But that's just logistical terms. And if we take a step back, you know, it started out... Um, can I have the slides, please? Yes, sorry. All right, so it started out with this chaos uh, in supply chain um, and uh, with, the, with the vessels and uh, the ships waiting in Shanghai. But when you take a step back, in the lower, left side, uh, lower right corner, you see it started out with the COVID. COVID-19 happened and it spread all around the world, starting out with China, Italy, Europe, and the rest of the world. And then you saw all kinds of lockdowns. As, and if you look uh, at all this, you know, there are all kinds of ripple effects, third order effects. Uh, in, impacting all kinds of uh, uh, businesses. So with lockdowns, you saw a huge growth on, of e-commerce. So because people were locked down, people uh, couldn't order stuff uh, or, or go to the shops, so they ordered online. So it was huge growth in, um, in e-commerce. But also an, an effect was that um, a lot of shortages because of the lockdowns, factories uh, didn't produce, so there were all kinds of shortages. Um, and as an effect, um, you see the prices going up, especially if fuel prices are going through the roof. And uh, as a result, you will see that there is uh, inflation coming up. And inflation will stay for the next year. Uh, it, 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 it's not expected that this uh, inflation will go away rapidly. And so it remains uh, at that, that level. So when you go to, to the left, you see that the uh, recession is uh, ticking in. So Germany was already in a recession basically because uh, the automotive is uh, such a big part of uh, the, the German economy that, uh, as a result, they had a, a brief recession. Uh, uh, fortunately, uh, the Netherlands uh, uh, wasn't hit by a recession, but uh, 10 years ago, when the Germany got sick economically, the Netherlands would uh, get sick. But now, things have changed. But then again, we also see a decline. So going to the upper right uh, corner, you see a decline. So uh, demand is... Um, is declining, and as a result, for example, um, it will also affect uh, uh, e-commerce. So, when the, the latest statistics is that you know that compared to last year, e-commerce had dropped with 16% in the Netflix, one six percent, and in Belgium, 10%. So, e-commerce is com coming down compared to a year ago. So, these are uh, all kind of ripple effects, and we can expect that demand will shift in the next year. Um, you know, preferences will change. You already see that even richer people are buying more white-label brands. Because, you know, the fuel prices uh, will affect also uh, the higher income. So these things will all change. So all the supply chains will, 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 will be in a turmoil. Forecasting, uh, statistical forecasting uh, is worthless because uh, all your data from last year, you know, doesn't say much anything for the future. So things will change. But, you know, this is just the surface. This is uh, the surface of the water, all these stones being thrown in the water, and you see all kinds of ripple effects. But underneath, you have tectonic plates. And what are these tectonic plates? So you see, you know, in geopolitical sense, you know, there is some friction all around the world. And uh, these kind of frictions, um, you know, it has a historical background. They will pop up. And um, so, you know, you have to be aware of that. So things will change also in a macroeconomic sense, but also for supply chain. And as of uh, February 24th, you know, we saw this, this black swan. So, you know, the war in Ukraine 
was a major impact and it, it will uh, uh, remain a major impact for the whole economy, for supply chain. So, so, so this was unexpected for a lot, of, a lot of us. For most companies, they didn't expect uh, this happen and it, they didn't even expect what are the effects of this, you know. And you know, you all read it, you know, what, uh, what it will all will do for the automotive and for the agricultural uh, uh, flows uh, around the world. We all know that. But that is these, that these are the things we see happening, falling out in the last uh, month. So, how do you uh, handle uh, all this? So basically, you know, uh, the, the Dutch military already did war games and played it out last November. And uh, this is a, a slide for a war game. And this is uh, how the military is doing scenario planning. So in the middle you see something happening and then you fold out, you see all kinds of directions, all kinds of ripple effects uh, going on. And you see uh, uh, the, the likelihood of certain things happening and you see also uh, some patterns and also some end games. So you can, you can get, uh, get in certain end games by various routes, I would say. This is what the military is doing, uh, well, for, for decades, for, for centuries, I would say. And this is what companies should do. So I was, talking, I was talking to a Dutch company in high tech, you know, and I explained all this. And based on that, you know, they are doing this. And they have to see, okay, what would happen if China will invade uh, Taiwan? And uh, you know, lo and behold, they have a factory in China and they have a main supplier in Taiwan. So you can imagine what will happen you know, with the friction. And now, what you see in China, uh, China is closing up. Uh, they are locked down, but you know, they want to produce for themselves. So uh, China being the factory of the world, that will change. And as a result, a lot of companies, 60% of the companies uh, in the US and America already considering reshoring, so 60%, to some extent. So they look at the strategic parts, and even small things could be strategic. So that will change the whole game, but basically, when I talk to companies, you know, we do our uh, all kind of firefighting nowadays. We don't have time for all this. So no, 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 you have to, your Friday afternoon, you should do this. And when one, one Friday afternoon, you can create the scenarios. And then you have another kind of discussion with the direction. So this Dutch company, the high-tech company, unfortunately, this supply chain director has a meeting with the board today about this. So, you know, um, uh, you can't wait for the future. You can't wait to let the future unfold. So you have to respond to this and you have to do this. And you know, if you see some outcomes, and some are horrible outcomes, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a bit relieved that Putin has said, you know, it's fine if uh, Sweden and Finland will join NATO, as long as there, will, there won't be uh, military NATO bases in these countries. For me, that's, that's already a trigger point for some expense, some scenarios you can write off. All right, but you know, if you have done this, then you come to the conclusion, okay, we have to improve, we have to innovate, we have to uh, take uh, uh, strategic courses. So basically, you have to consider, we have to climb some mountains. And this is the theme of the day, which mountain to climb. So basically, when you look around in supply chain, there are three major mountains to climb. The first one is uh, uh, digital planning, end-to-end -end planning. So look beyond your own factories, your own uh, warehouses. Look to your tier one, tier two suppliers, and so forth and so on. Go downstream, end-to-end -end planning. So that's uh, mountain number one. Another one, and that's also major, and that will be the major mountain for the next decade, or decades, I would say, is sustainability. And now uh, we have uh, ESG uh, goals, etc. But now they have to become realistic and they have to be uh, re uh, achieved. And the final one is uh, visibility, mount visibility. And you saw a lot of companies investing in uh, uh, supply chain visibility software in the last uh, two years. Why? We want to know where are my goods, uh, are we able to, to deliver on time, are we able to deliver anyhow, etc. Uh, so, because of the scarcity all around the world, visibility is a major part. So basically, the thing is, how do you choose your, your mountain? Which mountain to climb? And basically, that's depending on your, your ambition, your business strategy. What is your business strategy? Is it operational excellence? Is it product leadership or customer intimacy? You have to choose. So basically, uh, you have to choose your mountain based on your company ambition. And what we have seen, we have done a, long, uh, a major study in the Netherlands among 175 companies, and there's a total misalignment between business strategy, what would you want to, uh, to become, what is your ambition uh, business-wise, how does it translate to uh, your supply chain setup, and how does it translate into your inventory strategy. Two times a mismatch.
No alignment. And I, that, that's terrible. So basically now, the good news is, the CEOs of the world are aware that, you know, our business is now around supply chains, not about selling stuff or marketing stuff, no. The business nowadays is around supply chain. That's the good news. But uh, the, the flip side is, now we have to explain to, to the boards, to the directors, to the CEOs of this world, what we should do. What should be our strategy and what can we produce? And how does it match into our strategy? Totally different uh, conversations. So basically, you know, you have to climb a mountain and, um, and uh, yeah, you have to uh, take your path. So, you know, when I was young, since six years old, you know, I was uh, hiking a lot with my uh, brother and my father and my mother in the Alps. And um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to, uh, to have uh, professional uh, hiking shoes. And my father said, you know, when people would ask him, how did this kid of six years old uh, get up this mountain so high? By walking and have a steady course. So that's uh, what, I, what I was trained to do. And uh, later on, I think I was um, eight or ten or whatever, uh, we, we have, have our path uh, up to the mountain, to a mountain hut, and uh, we, we didn't expect any uh, circumstances that were dangerous or whatever. So we came across a small path, and there was a huge glacier. And this glacier was 80 to 90 degrees downwards. And we have to cross it to, to get to our hut. So basically, you know, we weren't prepared in the sense that, you know, okay, uh, that there would be a glacier. And there was a small path on this glacier, and uh, basically, you know, uh, we all say, you know, do we go, go back? No, no, we go forward, okay. And, okay, when we slip, you will die. So basically, you know, if you have a steady footing and go through this path, and I was eight years old, I still remember it quite clearly, and steady as I go, uh, you know, put your foot down and stay on and, 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 and have a focus, and then it was, I think, 100 meters or whatever, we across the glacier and we made it. So basically... <laughs> Even if you have chosen the mountain, you have to realize how to do that, you know? You have to prepare and train yourself. And <laughs> none of us are trained of this Ukraine uh, turmoil happening around the world. So uh, when I was later, you know, I think it was 10 or something, um, the four of us were hiking in the Alps, and we have uh, set out a path to, uh, to a mountain hut, and, uh, okay, we were almost there. And um, we, looking up, my brother and I could see already the mountain hut. And um, uh, my brother and I, I asked uh, to, my, uh, to my, my parents, okay, could, could we take a shortcut? Could we take a shortcut and we go, uh, you know, up this mountain, you know, it will be, I don't know, 500 meters and a steep climb. And, uh, yeah, and uh, my, my parents, okay, uh, you are well prepared, okay, just do it. All right, so we went up and we were there. And coming there, we thought we were at the, the end state of the hut. But it wasn't the hut. It was a, a gondola, uh, gondola uh, lift cabin, so it was a totally different uh, uh, hut we expected. So I said to my boy, uh, to my brother, so what should we do? Um, should we go back down? Should we, should, should we go to, uh, with the gondola downstairs, go, go back to the hotel? Uh, you know, and in the end, I said, no, well, don't panic, you know, just wait. But, uh, so the, in the end, we couldn't see my parents, you know, they were out of sight or whatever. So, Within an hour, my parents came back, and luckily, okay, we were reunited, and we were all happily, but basically, you know, you have to prepare what to do. So uh, that's my uh, final part, you know. So, okay, you have chosen a mountain. And then, you know, okay, uh, this is the Mount Matterhorn, and there are uh, four major paths uh, climbing it. So which, which path do you climb? And basically, you have uh, to, to, uh, to choose this uh, path based on a few things. First, uh, internally uh, cooperation. Are your business functions cooperating uh, enough to climb this mountain? And uh, who will climb this mountain or which department? Um, you have also external collaboration that, you know, depend upon your logistics service providers, uh, your contract manufacturers, uh, your packaging uh, uh, suppliers, etc. And there is also something like competition, you know. So uh, we, we, what is the safest path for us to climb? And finally, the circumstances. Is this night weather, or is there a chance of an avalanche, etc.? So basically, these are all considerations to, to pick your path for this, this, uh, this climb of this mountain. But in the end, you know, if, if you, okay, you have chosen path number one, and you have, to, okay, you have a timeline, and you, you, you know what to do. But what will happen if you stumble upon this path, and you, you see another team taking the same path, your competition? What will you do? 
Do you take another path, reroute? Do you wait? Uh, do you join forces? Do, do you climb together? Do you throw them from the mountains? So these are the considerations you have to do because there's a huge scarcity of talent. We all know, what should we do if we climb this mountain? We all want to digitalize the supply chains, but there's a scarcity of, uh, of uh, personnel and talents, whatever. So maybe you should join forces or kick them off the mountain, whatever. But you know, you have to choose. So basically, you know, this is the theme of today, uh, which mountain to climb and how to climb it. And uh, I think we have a great uh, 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 lineup of uh, uh, great executives and, um, and also nice startups who might help you to have some kind to, uh, cool tools to, uh, to climb these mountains. And also we have all kind of cool vendors and tracks. We have different tracks uh, later on. So we have a track on uh, planning, visibility, and uh, sustainability. So if you are with more than one and in one company, choose wisely and split up and to see, okay, which mountain to climb. And then you can compare notes and then you can uh, uh, teach each other and to say, uh, you know, this is in, in planning and visibility and sustainability, the things to do, and this mountain we should climb. And with, 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 with which partner and et cetera. So for this, for now, I would like it with this. And as I said, you know, um, when you are climbing a mountain, when you go through a transformation, Storytelling is paramount. Storytelling is essential. You have to take along all your people inside your company, probably outside your company in the whole supply chain. So storytelling uh, is, uh, is uh, paramount. So 